Harabakio Sotoromase Hagandaraba Shakai Itorobose Shakai Ikorobo Sata Ye Naya Randololo Siataya La Randololoco Ye La Naya La Nana La La Roto Candeo Sotoromo Seana Hirararacoso Hikayaranorosi Shotoraba Shokora Tata Hirararabocoye Hiramasi Hakanasi Kanaha Ananaya Tarabosa Hataya Rabosa Adoro Bosaya Shatarabotaya no Robosaya. Oh, Akaya Rabose. Shah Alamosata Ramahaye. Come on, some of you are feeling a special touch right now. That touch is intimacy. It's like the Lord coming in just a little bit closer. And that touch is an invitation. It's an invitation. It's an invitation saying, I'm letting you feel this. I'm letting you feel me in a closer way. But it requires a response. It requires a decision. Come on, you're feeling that touch. It's more than just a touch from a father to a son. But it's Jesus Christ to his bride. Come on, why don't we just let the Holy Ghost work in an intimate way right now. That's it, why don't you just begin to give yourself to him. Hataya la soto lo 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 corranda la ha. Andelele le recoto y asa. Uri atarabo se. Hakanamo soto ye. Hakayaray ki orosa. Oh, come on, I feel it in this place. Come on, more than anything that I can receive from God, I just want His presence. Oh, there's a song that says, Por un desteo de tu gloria. Oh, just, just, just a moment in His, in His glory. Just a moment in His presence. Ayakaya rabo Jose, akaya bosana, akaya namo soto romanda ye. Iha na satana ka, ana na yakata na si, akaya na 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 kias ana na ye. I don't know if this is just church culture, but at least for me, I was very comfortable doing something in church if I saw everyone else doing it. And I would feel sort of uncomfortable or in a weird place when God told me to do something that not everyone else was doing. That's because he stand out. And I feel in the Holy Ghost there would be some times in services that I would I, I would just feel to <coughs> go a certain depth in prayer, but it felt uncomfortable to do it. Felt weird sometimes because 
it was a vein that felt like it was deeper than those around. And if I tapped into it, there would be a significant difference. And it would make me feel uncomfortable. And the reason being is because God would be in control. I wouldn't. There's some of you here, you've, you've been feeling a depth, not just in this prayer meeting, but you felt the depth throughout so many services. God calling you to a, a, a deep place. And sometimes that place is a deeper place that not everyone is exposed to. Or they're not at that certain depth yet. But I feel in the Holy Ghost, if you would, I, I, I don't know who exactly the Lord is after in this meeting, but he's after someone in particular that if you would just, if you would just give in, if you would just give in to what the Holy Ghost is doing in this moment, and you wouldn't worry about the kind of volume that someone else is praying beside you, that you wouldn't be worried about what others would think, but you would just travel in the spirit to that depth. The Lord will meet you there. The Lord will meet you there. Right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, the Holy Ghost wants to take some of you to a deep place. Come on, I'm not looking after your volume right now. The Holy Ghost is looking after you. He's looking after you. Come on, he's looking after the inner man. He's looking for the inner man. The Holy Ghost isn't after you going through the motions. And you just going through it. Because you feel like there's nothing else to do, so you just go through the motions. No, he's looking after the depth. He's not looking after you to just go through the motions and just go through the routines of prayer. No, the Holy Ghost is looking for your heart. He's looking for your heart that's willing to go the depth, to go the distance that God wants to take you. Tina moro toye, silele moro kota yalasi, robo se. Come on, we need to plug into this. There's something special that God wants to do. Kia na maso to robo se, romando robo si anda rebe kia, robo si anda. Come on, sometimes we go through the routine of prayer and we go through the steps without actually truly connecting. Connecting. God doesn't want you to go through the motions. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. He wants you to go through the depth that can only be pursued through a connection. Come on, we're hitting that deep place right now. We're hitting that deep place. Ah, kela sono itona mai. Rondolo bokoto si ana ha. Riala masi ele morokota. Arabasha, arabasha, hatai araboko. Come on, a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. Halala la ratai si ana na 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 koroshi. Come on, there's a depth in this place. I'm not going to try to control what the Holy Ghost is doing right now. Come on, he's speaking something right now in your spirit. 
I, 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 I speak to you in the Holy Ghost. Just let it go. Just let it go. What you're feeling in the Holy Ghost. Don't try to control it. Just let it go. The Holy Ghost wants to be uncaged tonight. The Holy Ghost wants to be uncaged tonight. He wants to be a limitless God without limitation. Come on, we need to plug in right now. Come on, it's imperative that we all get into the same mind. The Bible says till we all, till we all, not just the people on the platform, not just the specialists, not just those that we consider gifted, but till we all come into the unity of the faith, till we all come under the same vein and the same flow. Come on, let's get in the same flow right now. Roma Shianaya Suto Roma. Kiala la rata. Shandala la 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 borokotaye. Kayara la bose. Shatara la bokorosa. Kiala la la rataye. Come on, are you willing to go where the Holy Ghost wants to go? Come on, are Come on, he's not done. He's not done. He's not done. Come on, come on, come on, come Come on a little bit further, a little bit further. Come on, we're not going through the motions tonight. We're not just praying our hour and being done because it's part of our routine. Come on, I want more than just a routine prayer. I want more than just the, the motions, Lord. Come on, that's it. We're in the same vein right now. We're in the same vein right now. Come on, let's just go deep right now. Come on. Nothing else matters in this moment. It's just us and Jesus. It's just us and Jesus. Come on, don't let this moment pass you by. Come on, that's it, church. Come on, that's it, church. Come on, we're entering into the same vein right now. Come on, we're coming to the unity of the faith. Let the Holy Ghost work on you. Let the Holy Ghost work on you.
Come on. Come on, you're not alone. Let the Holy Ghost stir something inside. You're not alone. Let the Holy Ghost stir something inside. Come on, that's it, woman of God. Step into that depth. That's it. Step into that depth. Come on, we're stepping into something right now. There's an opening in the spirit. There's an opening in the spirit. Come on, don't let this moment pass you by, Mary. Don't let this moment pass you by, Mary. Come on, I know Martha is busy, but Mary, you're at the feet of Jesus. Don't let it pass you by. Come on, someone needs to take the spirit of Mary right now. That just says, I know there's some work that needs to be done. I know there's some things and the checklist and the to-do list but what's important is that Jesus is in my house and I can sit at his feet come on where are you at that's what the Holy Ghost is asking come on God I'm not satisfied being Martha but Lord I want to sit at the feet of Jesus God forgive us Forgive us, Lord. See la borotaya na. Shayara borotaya le bosa. God forgive me. Oh, there's a deep sovereign move of the Holy Ghost right now. God, he corrobo, he lava, carabo say, God, I don't want to be so busy with things and, and things that are on my to do list that I forget that Jesus is in me, that Jesus is in my house. Come on, I don't know about you, but Jesus is in this house. Jesus is in this house. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords is in this house. Forgive me, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be unkind. <laughs> but it's very easy. It's very easy to be Martha in the presence of God. Oh, Lord, I pray for your grace to say this, to help me say this how you want me to say it. God's not asking for you to be a Martha right now. Come on, I, I know there's things that go into this, this service and it needs to be done. There's things, there's, there's things that need to be planned. There's things that, that need to be on point. So I'm not saying all of that's bad. It's not. There's a need for administration. But the fact that Jesus is in this house, I don't believe God wants us to be a Martha in this moment. Because it's so easy to be busy and forget that Jesus is right in front of us. So can right now, can, can all of us as a body of Christ, can we just forget about everything else? 
Forget about the responsibilities that we're trying to do on our own. And can we just be a Mary? Can we just sit at the feet of Jesus? Come on, you and Jesus right now. You and Jesus right now. Come on, the Holy Ghost is saying, you can go deeper. You can go deeper. Come on, that's it, Mary. That's it, Mary. Come on, I know there's some voices around you. Come on, you. It may not be a person that you physically hear, but it's it's a voice of Martha that says, well, you got to do this, and you got to worry about this at home, and you got this situation going on, and that person's doing this, and you got to worry about that. But God is saying right now, I don't want you to be a Martha. I want you to be a Mary because I got some things to say. Come on, God's using your prayers right now because you've decided to sit at His feet. That's it, Sister Terry. That's it. Be the Mary. Be the Mary in your family. Come on, that's it. That's it. Roto lo 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 rota kahaya. Come on, this is the will of the Lord for tonight. Lord, I didn't, I didn't come with this prepared beforehand. But the Holy Ghost is pulling this out.
Come on, there's a spirit of repentance right now. Come on, there's so many times the presence of God shows up in services like this. And immediately our brain thinks, what can we do? What can we offer? When he just sometimes simply wants us to sit at his feet and listen to what he's saying. Someone needs to hear this. Your value does not come through what you do. Your value comes from him. Because God will not allow you to do things perfectly. There will be a mistake in some point in time. Because we're not perfect. So what you do, your ability, your performance can't be the basis of your value. Uh, Please permit me to say what I feel in my spirit. I am not trying to be critical. This is that's not that's not the what God wants to speak. But some of you, this is this is what the Holy Ghost has told me. You've been addicted to work because you're good at it. You find your value in it. When someone asks what you do, there's, there's a certain pride that comes into it. It's because it's easy to base your value on your occupation. But hear me in the Holy Ghost tonight. My value... My value does not come from holding a microphone. It does not come from being on a platform. It does not come from being known by many people. No. It comes from a Savior that saw me in my weakest and most lowest state and saw me in the sin that I was in saw me in the imperfection and the filth that I was living in and he said I'll die for you I'll die for you can I tell you in the Holy Ghost right now that's where your worth comes your value doesn't come through what you do but your value comes from the fact that the savior of the world and the creator of the world saw something in you not just the person next to you but saw something in you and said what's inside of them is worth dying for (laughs) come on we can't forget that value (laughs) we can't forget the value that the Lord Jesus Christ has attached to us (laughs) Come on, come on, we'll see. Come on, there's a vein that still needs to be tapped into. Oh, Rianda Lama,
I'm going to be transparent with you all for a moment. <laughs> it's easy to find, to try to find my value in gifts. <laughs> it's easy to find my value. Because of the way the Lord uses me. But I remember the words of the Lord that he spoke to me. I asked him, why would you choose me? I said, God, I didn't. Come from. I didn't have prophecy spoken over me as a little kid. I didn't, people didn't look at me and say, oh, this person, he's, he's going to be used of God. God, I didn't have that. Why did you use me? And he said, I didn't use you because you were qualified. I used you and I chose you because I saw a young boy that could get alone in my presence and that would be willing to give up everything just to know me. And because of that, that's why I planted those gifts in your spirit. I planted those, that mantle. But he said... Let it always be a reminder of the reason I chose you. I didn't impart gifts for you to run away with it and take the glory or the credit for yourself. But I imparted those gifts because I saw a young boy that was willing to give everything up. And I said, I can use that one. I can use that one. So hear me in the Holy Ghost when I say this. Your gifts, they are, they are a powerful thing from God. They are an amazing thing from God. But they're a product of His grace. And they're a product of His love. Rotolo <laughs> Come on, the Holy Ghost is giving you things. Come on, the Holy Ghost can give you gifts. He can even give you a harvest. But let the gifts and the harvest always be a reminder from the very beginning of where it all started. Come on, my whole life I've tried to be something when the Holy Ghost just wanted me to be nothing, just emptied out, just totally surrendered. Or I have no, no motive really, it's just His motive. God wants us to get to that place.
I really don't want to interrupt what God's doing in this place. Come on, let's just keep on flowing right now. Sayatana kio sotoro taha kete ala satata rabaha. I'd say, Brother Jim, God's laying something upon you right now. Just begin to lift up your hands. God's releasing something in your spirit right now. Just lift up your hands. Shatalala rotolo bokose. Brother Jim, God's releasing a mantle upon you. He's releasing an authority upon you. Just receive it right now. Kanda sotoramaike. Riatolo siele ratalala kaha. Kiananama sotoroma siataramaha. Brother Allen, why don't you just begin to extend your hand towards Brother Jim right now. I can't get away from this. God's doing something in him. The Bible says that for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Glory is something that is not to be messed around with in the kingdom of God. And God takes people that he can trust with his glory. That when there's a temptation to receive it, that they just return it back to him. There are some things right now God is... I don't know if I know of a more powerful church. You guys are gifted. Some of you don't even realize it, but you're, you have authority. You're gifted. I just feel like to say this, and I don't know if I'm done. We'll see where the Holy Ghost leads this, but I was on the phone with someone yesterday and this person he just began to talk to me and he said something that just connected so much he said you're not the gift and there's a mantle on your life but a mantle is something that is not you is something that is put on you. And that mantle, it could easily come off and it could easily be put on. So beware because God has given you gifts, but you have to remember it's not about you something that you have that God's given but it's not you because it could easily come off can I can I be transparent sometimes we sometimes I try to gather Pentecostal badges throughout services. And what I mean by that is if I pray for someone, oh, the Lord used me today. I could check that off the list. 
God, use me to speak this kind of word. And I had no idea that was getting in the way of the righteousness of God and the grace of God from flowing. Because I started making it about what I achieved. What I could do. Jesus wasn't interested in what Martha could do. He was interested in what Mary, what Mary's desire was. Her desire was to sit at the feet of Jesus. So Sister Machika, you, you can come whenever you feel, but I feel this so strongly and I don't, I don't know who this is for. Maybe it's just for me so I can just get it in my spirit. But you will never, there will never be a day where you will be the gift. The Holy Ghost is the gift. And if you always remember that it's a gift of the Holy Ghost that you didn't earn it. But at some point, at some crossroads with your relationship with God, whether it was in prayer or as a service, he saw you and he just wanted to give you some kind of gift because he loved you. And he gave you that gift. And with that gift, he also gave you a responsibility. Uh, I'm done after this statement, but I just feel to say this. And Sister Lachika, just whatever you feel. But many of you are familiar with Brother Billy Cole. He told a story one time, and that story was he was praying, and God gave him the gift to pray people through the Holy Ghost. That's what God gave him. And you know it's evident because you read the reports in Ethiopia almost pretty much half a million people receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost in one service in Ethiopia. Tremendous, powerful things. Just, there's, you could even Google it. There's videos on it. It's amazing. But he told this story and he said, when God gave him that gift, the Holy Ghost said, I now have given you the gift to see people receive the Holy Ghost when you pray for them. But you must remember, you will never have to pray for me to use you in this gift. But you will most certainly have to pray that your soul will not be lost. Because if your soul is lost, because you get caught up in the glory of being used, when you should just be a conduit for his glory to flow. He said, you'll never have to pray for me to use you in that gift. But from this day forward, you will now have to pray that your spirit would be kept pure. That your spirit would be kept humble. I don't believe that's just gifts. But that applies to God giving us a harvest. It applies to God giving us souls. He wants to trust us, church, with so much. That's why he's doing this. I wonder if before Sister Lachika comes, can we just lift up our hands towards heaven right now? So many of you, you you're you're gifted. There's so many of you. You're you're so powerfully used. I I've, I saw some of you these past few weeks just being used, and it's just tremendous the way God is using you. But God's saying. He's given you that gift. You won't have to pray for him to use you in that gift. Because he's given it to you. He's downloaded it. But what you will have to pray is to make sure your soul is kept pure. And it's kept consecrated. Come on, that can only happen through prayer. That can only happen through fasting. That can only happen through getting down on your knees. And humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. Come on, that's say Come on, I believe a wave of the Holy Ghost 
is about to cover us right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you want the Lord to keep you, why don't you just begin to lift up both hands? God, you're going to use us in this last hour, but let our spirit be kept pure. God's saying if you keep your spirit pure, he'll be able to promote you to greater things and greater places. But he's not going to put you in a greater place if you're not ready because he doesn't want to risk destruction. He wants to keep you safe. Why don't you just begin to worship the Lord? I'm not asking for anything specific. Just whatever you want to do to express to him how much he means to you. Why don't you just begin to express to him, God, I thank you for the gifts that you've given me. But Lord, the most important gift is you. The greatest gift that I could ever receive is you. It's your spirit. It's your love. And I want to always remember that when I'm in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Keep praying. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Yoro koi siera. Yoro koi kaya shai siera. We're following the flow of the Holy Ghost. Keep praying in the Spirit. Yoro hi kaya shai siera. Yoro hi kaya dai siera. Kia da hai siera. Yoro koi kaya shai siera. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Yoro Kohi Sieraha. Yorai Kaya Shahi Sieraha. Lord, keep our hearts pure, Father. As you've given us a lot of revelation, O oh God, as you've blessed your body with the gifts, Lord. Keep our hearts pure, Father. In the name of Jesus. Because some of you, God is promoting. God is bringing to a higher level. And the Lord's rhema today was, be careful. Lord, give us that grace to give you the glory in everything that you do through us, Father. In everything that we do, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, for it is your gift, O oh God. It is your will, O oh God. It is for you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Yoro i kaya shai siera ha. Yoro koi siera ha hi siera ha. Give us the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord that we will not seek to taste his glory. That is his. Lord, keep me safe, Father. Keep me safe, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I don't want to touch your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Yoro Koi Sierra, Yoro Koi Kaya Shai Sierra. Oh, thank you, Lord. I believe he's heard our prayers. I believe he's heard our prayers. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yoro hi kaya shai siera. Yoro koi siera hai siera. Pray your covering of grace upon us, O God. 
your covering of humility, oh God, upon us, honoring you, oh God, honoring you, oh God, in everything you do through us, your conduits, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise him one more time. Let's worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, oh God. You're worthy, oh God. We love you, oh God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, wow. How many of you feel good in your spirit? Thank you, Jesus. And there's still that liberty, that flow, and we're not done praying yet. But we want to share some teaching, especially we have new students, and we want also to be able to review what's in the Word of God so that we can be able to share, amen, with others about praying in the Spirit, about the gift of tongues, amen. We want to be able to share with them what is in the Word of God, in Jesus' name. And, um, um, Brother Jim, if you can put up the PowerPoint. And there are purposes of praying in the Spirit. There are purposes of praying in the Spirit. What is praying the Spirit? That's when we speak in other tongues, amen. And this is not an extensive list, but this is what the Lord gave me, the most relevant that we could share with others, why it's important, amen, to pray in the Holy Ghost, to pray in tongues, to pray in the Spirit. And number one here is, it's important for us because it is a sign that we have the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit in us. Amen? The evidence that the Spirit is flowing through us is when we're able to speak in tongues the language that He gives us. And we don't have a choice of that. Amen? It's the language that the Lord gives to us that we've never learned. And we know these verses, but let's go ahead and I'm going to show it to you. Again, Acts 2, for the day of Pentecost, amen, when they were all waiting for the promise, what were they doing? They were praying. They probably started praying in their own dialect, amen. And then all of a sudden, right, the Holy Ghost came upon them. Acts 2, for what it says, what does it say? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we know that we know that they were filled with the Holy Ghost because they began to speak with other tongues. Okay, and there's other verses. Um, in fact, after the day of Pentecost, you will read how the other groups of people, the Ephesians, Galatians, Cornelius, received the Holy Ghost for they spoke in tongues. Amen? You'll, you'll find other examples in the book of Acts about that. And um, here's Mark 16 that says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
What is the next part of that verse? And he that believeth not shall be damned. Why? Because believing requires action, right? When you believe, when you, believing is clinging to God. Amen? So this is about believing and being saved. All right? And it says, these signs shall follow them that believe. And there are, I didn't put all the verses there, but there are five signs it lists. And it says, in thy name, in the Lord's name, they shall cast out devils. So you have power authority over the demonic spirits. You can cast them out. You can bind them. You have that authority. Amen? And then check this out. They shall speak with what? New tongues. It's for all believers. Amen? That are saved. Amen? And the other signs here, like those that um, if you take up serpents, if you drink any deadly thing, right? What is that? You also have authority. Don't, you not only have authority over the devil that you can bind, you have authority over. You have the authority that you could speak with new tongues. Amen. You have the authority over nature. Amen. You have authority over any harm that man will do against you. You have that authority. In Jesus' name, you're covering protection. And it says you have authority over sickness. How many of you have felt the healing of the Lord? Any immediate testimonies? All right, I'm waiting for those miracles. Sister Grace raising her hand. Can't, do you mind if I bring this mic to you? So very soon after I start coming in uh, to the church, um, Brother Dylan came and prayed for me, and I've been suffering for lower back problems since I was 36, and I'm 68, so count plus many years, and I was bedridden when my lower back was hurting so bad. He came, prayed, you did too, Lauren also, and since then, it's over a year, my back has not gone up anymore. <laughs> and I should mention, I'm such a baby Christian that the enemy wants to put doubts in me. And there is, since it's been over a year, I have not been bedridden, but there's sometimes I feel that little twitch in my back, and I tell the enemy, no, no, it's, it, it, I, I was healed, no, and it's gone, and it, it goes away. Hallelujah. Praise God. I have many testimonies, but tonight that's it. No, no, no. I want to give him a chance to have it. Praise God. That is so awesome. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that happened when we were following the leading of the Lord. Have you guys put on your door hangers yet? There was a time we were going neighborhood outreach, and the Lord led us. In Jesus' name, I just... Thank God for that powerful testimony. And the enemy will try, right? But you have that faith. You're putting up your shield of faith and saying, God, no, you did a work in my body, in Jesus. We have dominion. We have dominion. And, and we, we can have that same victory, that same miracle, in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Praise God. Expect it. Expect it in Jesus' name. That's the Holy Ghost in us. Amen. That's the Holy Ghost working in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So it is a sign that we have the Holy Ghost, all these other, <laughs> the works of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Speaking in tongues is one of them. Okay. But the sign that you have the Holy Ghost is how he could use you in the gifts. Amen. 
for his glory and mostly for souls to be converted to as well. Amen. That way, Sister Grace can say, okay, I feel the spirit of God is upon this group. I will, Lord, follow your leading. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right. And I like this one. John 3, 8, when the Lord Jesus was teaching Nicodemus, amen, about being born of the water and of the spirit. And he says, the wind blows where it wills. This I did amplified classic version. I like how it says it here. The wind blows where it wills, and though you hear its sound, yet you neither know where it comes from nor where it is going. You can't see it. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit, you hear a sound. Okay? So it is a sign, and that's why we pray for souls to receive that sign. Okay? It's the evidence that, okay, they've got it. Amen? And then that's when we start discipling more because we need the word. Amen? We need to grow in the grace of God. Amen? And the word in Jesus' name. All right. So it is a sign that we have the Holy Ghost, purposes of praying in the spirit while we pray, pray in tongues. Amen? And then... It edifies us. Wow. Tonight, that edified me. And I know all of us here praying, amen, when we were praying, we were praying what? Relational prayers for ourselves. We were not ministering to one another, right? We're praying for ourselves. And we need that, amen? That's why we do relational prayer in the beginning and we do ministry prayer afterwards. Okay, and we're going to do ministry prayer in a bit. But this is important. We do relational prayer, praying in the Holy Ghost. We could pray also with understanding. But you want to pray in the Spirit because it edifies you. Amen? Jude 20, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Remember that scripture, Jude 1. It's only one chapter, verse 20. But ye beloved, building up yourselves. It builds us up. Amen? Amen? On our most holy faith, as we pray in the Spirit, every time you pray in the Spirit, it helps you. It builds you up. Amen. And I like um, Amplified Classic Version again. But ye, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice higher and higher, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Wow. Oh, Lord, keep us growing. Your time is not wasted when you pray in the Spirit. Amen? This is happening when you pray in the Spirit. And this, that's why the Apostle Paul says, I speak in tongues a lot. He says, I speak in tongues more than you all because he's realized the benefit of praying in the Spirit. In Jesus' name. It gives us rest and refreshing. Most of us know this, okay? Isaiah 28, 11, 12, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So when we speak in another tongue or we speak in tongues, we speak in the Holy Ghost, we pray in the Holy Ghost, we're receiving rest. We're receiving re refreshing. And what is the difference from the other types of tongues? Usually, I call, we call this refreshing tongues. It's a calm type of praying in the spirit. You're not um, releasing your emotions. You're holding back your emotions. And you're receiving like the Lord's refreshing. Amen. It's like you're drinking from the rivers. Amen. And then let us just practice right now. And if you haven't done it, just practice with us. It's just calm. That's how it sounds. You're receiving in the spirit. That's right. You can even do this when you're physically tired. It will give you rest. Emotionally as well, it can give you rest. So anytime you feel that weariness... In your mind, body, do refreshing tongues. It's calm tongues in Jesus' name. Amen. Another 
reason, a lot, I'd say one of the most important reasons that we need to pray in the spirit is because it helps us to pray for ourselves and for others. And this is the foundation of that scripture. We know it. Romans 8, 26, 27. It says, likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities or our weaknesses, for we do not know how we should pray as we should. But the spirit in us makes intercession for us, prays for us, okay, with groanings or words that we cannot express. And he that searcheth the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Praying in the spirit, for me, I call this the perfect prayer. Because when I pray in English, I may feel it at times, and God may hear it, amen. But when you're praying the spirit, he's the one praying through you. He knows everything. I don't. I don't. But when you're praying the spirit, he prays for, for the needs. And it could be for yourself. It could be for the love, your loved ones. It could be for the body. Because it says intercession for the saints. Amen. So as you pray for yourself, you know, as you pray intercede, you know, if you feel, sometimes you feel it strong upon you, that's intercession. That is for somebody else. Amen. So it is so powerful that we could pray in the spirit to intercede for one another and pray for ourselves as well because he knows what we need. Amen. And here's another scripture here that I like to read. Matthew 18, 19, 20 says, and again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. There's a guarantee. This word tells you there's a guarantee that God, God's hand is upon you, upon that prayer meeting. Do you know there's a guarantee he's here, amen, that as we pray, his will will be done. Okay? Two or three gathered. And I thank God we have more than that here tonight in Jesus' name. And so we're going to do some um, prayers, praying, praying, ministry prayer. A while ago we did relational prayer. That's good. Now we're going to pray, pray as the Lord leads us to intercede for one another. And this is what we're going to do. Can you please stand? If we can all stand and... Um, Now, it helps when we close our eyes, amen, to get more in tune in the spirit, amen. And so this is what I feel I want us to do. Find someone, anyone, um, to find somebody to pray, pray for, okay? And you could take turns, all right? But I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the spirit, okay? Why don't you do that right now? Find somebody to pray for anyone, okay? If it's an odd number, you know, take turns, but two, pray in the spirit, okay? Pray for one another. Jesus' name. Yoro kohi kaya shagi siyaraha. Yoro kohi kaya ragi kasiyaraha. Yoro kohi kaya shagi siyaraha. In the name of Jesus, yes, that's right. Let the Spirit flow in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Yoro Kohi Sierra Hat. 
That's right. That's right. Let the ministry of the Spirit flow. That's right. God is doing his work. The Spirit is doing his work. He's meeting needs tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you feel a release, you can worship the Lord. If you feel a release, you can worship the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. You can feel the power of the presence of God here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. How many of you felt a witness of the Spirit? Okay, praise God. Praise God. You felt a different a touch from the Lord? Amen. How many of you felt a touch from the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Let's go ahead and thank him because he did something. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we're 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 gonna continue praying still, and we're gonna intercede in a little bit. Um but you could be seated just for a little bit, just for a little bit. And I do want to encourage you, you know, that as you minister more in the spirit, that God to, can do amazing things. And I remember that one time I was in a prayer conference, and I didn't really have much faith. <laughs> I just did what, what the leader said to do, and a sister was praying for me. And then all of a sudden, I started crying crying. I had no idea what I was crying about, but afterwards I felt the healing. You know, so you don't have to understand. And because tongues, right? You know, it's not for the interpretation, okay? It's God praying through you. We don't need to know, but you feel a witness in the spirit. So that let that be be content with that and and have your trust in the Lord that he's doing something in you in Jesus name. Amen. And so it's so important as we pray as a body, that we intercede. Amen? And there's two types of tongues intercession, okay? We have what we call warfare tongues, and we have travail tongues, okay? What is warfare tongues? Warfare tongues is when we pray with God's authority flowing through us. As his spirit binds and looses things in the spiritual world, okay? And they sound different, okay? If you haven't experienced it yet, you will know, okay, tonight. You will, you will hear it and you will feel it. And what do you do? Just flow with it, okay? Just flow with it. That's how I learned. I just flowed with it, okay? Um, and you have the travail tongues, that's... God's love, compassion flowing through you, amen? When we stand in the gap, when we intercede for the deliverance and birth of new souls, amen? And I thank God that we did a lot of prayer during the Buena Park service, amen? That was powerful, amen? And I thank God we did warfare tongues and we did travail tongues. And I know God's hand is upon, amen, the city, the souls in that city, in Jesus' name, I just thank God for that opportunity that we had, the privilege that we could do to pray together because this is powerful, amen? Travail tongues, I have two verses here. Isaiah 66 says, For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Travail tongues is very important as the Lord leads you. And usually we could pray warfare tongues more often. And I don't know why. <laughs> but usually there's more liberty. But travail tongues is not, I don't do it every day. It's as the Lord 
gives it upon me. Amen. But it's so powerful. And so as you feel that upon you, that, that burden, that love for souls, for lost souls, you pray in the spirit. And it's like, it's, it's, it could be very emotional, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, that's travail tongues. It's like you are, you're crying out for souls, amen, in the spirit. And then this, oh, there's another scripture that teaches us, Galatians 4.19. It says, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. So travail intercession tongues is the only intercession tongues that can give birth to new souls. Warfare tongues can't do that. And so it's important that we have that in the body, okay? So I pray, travail intercessors, keep, keep praying in Jesus' name. But it also teaches us that we don't only pray for new souls to be born into this kingdom, but we're praying for their growth. We're praying for their growth. Because if you don't grow, you won't be saved. That's why we teach discipleship class. That's why we train that's why we, we want you to learn all these things because we got to keep growing. And so there are times you may, you don't, and you don't need to really know who you're travailing for. It doesn't matter. Amen. But you just flow with that. So there's warfare tongues, which is a strong flow of tongues. It's, it's, it's like the anger of God. Amen. Like you're fighting. Okay. Like you're fighting. Okay. Travail tongues is sorrowful tongues. Because you're bearing, like you're bearing spiritual babies in Jesus' name. All right. Let us stand again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I feel that the Lord wants us to intercede. Amen. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yoro ko yikaya shayisiera. Yoro ko yikaya shayisiera. And for the sake of, of unity and training, I'm, I'm, I'm going to state this corner as you feel led when, we, when the Lord reveals needs that we're going to pray for. The warriors, if you can come join, pray here. Those in travail over here, okay, on, on, on your right, as the Lord leads in the name of Jesus. Wow, God is already moving here. In the name of Jesus. Yoro ko yi kasiyaraha. Yora yi kaya shagi siyaraha. Yoro ko yi siyaraha. Let us pray in the Holy Ghost. I believe that we are in Jesus' name praying for the souls where we live in the cities, neighborhoods, where we're at in Jesus' name. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yoro yi kaya shayi siyaraha. 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 Yoro yi kaya shaha. This is warfare tongues. This sounds like warfare tongues. Yoro yi kaya sha. Praying with authority in the name of Jesus. Yoro yi kaya sha. Brother Allen, Brother Allen, Ishi ya toya ya toro si ki ya toro si, I la toro si ya toro si ki ya, Ishi ya toro si ya toro si. Yes, Lord, we have come to plunder what the enemy has taken, Lord. Iki ya toya ya toro si ya toro si. Ishia ya tora ya tora sikia Ikia la tora sikia ya tora sia ya tora sia tora so Yes Lord we have come to take the enemy's spoils Lord Ikia ya tora sikia ya to regain what has been stolen from our kingdom from your kingdom Lord Ikia ya tora sikia Ikia la tora sia ya tora ya ya tora Ikia la shaya tola ya ya toya ma ya tara sikia. Ikia tora sikia ya shaya ya tora sikia. Iti ya ro shia ya tora sikia. 
Isi ayatora siki ayatora siki. Isi ayatora siki ayatora sotora sol. Uro siki ayatora. I ayatoi a. Iri ayatoi a nana tora siki ayatora siya. I ayatora isi a la 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 tora. Ano tora siki ayatora siya tora. Isi ayatora siya tora siki ayatora. Isi ayatora siki ayatora viya tora. Oh Lord. Our heart goes out to those that are lost, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Lord, we try to our Lord. For those lost, Lord. For those who have fallen for deceptive practices of the enemy, Lord. Our love goes out to those, Lord, as we fight for them. Yes, Lord, we claim your dominion, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Every city if represented here, we claim your dominion. Every city represented here, we claim your dominion. In the name of Jesus, the city of Buena Park in the name of Jesus, the city of Irvine in the name of Jesus, the city of Lake Forest in the name of Jesus, the city of Mission Viejo in the name of Jesus, the city of Laguna Niguel in the name of Jesus, Yora kiara ha isiara, yoro ko ikayasha. City of Rajasana Margarita in the name of Jesus. Yora ikayasha ha. Camp Pendleton in the name of Jesus. Yora ikayasha. Keep warring in the spirit. Keep warring in the spirit. Yora ikayasha. Yoro ko isiara, ikayasha ha. Yoro ko isiara. We claim your harvest in the schools, in IVC, in the name of Jesus. Yora ikayasha, yoro ikayasha, yora ikayasha, yoro ikayasha. Every community, we claim your dominion in the name of Jesus. Yora ikayasha, yoro ikayasha, yoro ikayasha. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Yora Ikayasha, Yoro Daniel. He Kambora Masika Tarabo Koso, Atanda Masika Taraba Kasata, Itando Raba Sota, Ikara Masika Toboso, Ate Orobosa, Itiando Bosoto, Asiabo Kosikata, Ilobosa, Itiando Robosata, Itando Raba Sikata, O Sale Roboso. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Akaso Taramasata, Ilobo Soko Taramasi, Hilanda Namarobo Kosondarabasikata, Hikarabarabakasikata, Hinando Ramasikata, 
Hiramando robo kosikata. Honda ramasiko roboso. Atara sikata. Ondo boso tobasi. Itiamo robo kosata. That's it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ikarabo kosikata. That's it in the name of Jesus. Hikando robo kosikata. That's it, Sister Christy, in the name of Jesus. Ikando ramasikata ramasa. If we can extend our hand to Sister Christy right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, let it be so right now. Irambo sata, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. Hinambo robo kosata ramasa. He's using you. Ikarobo kosikata. Hiramando robo kosikata. Hiramando robo kosikata. Hallelujah. Tikarama kasata. Hakata rabakata. Why do we thank God? Why do we thank God? Hikarobo kotarabakata. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I thank you, God, for the territory that we took over. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your head in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, go ahead. Why don't you make some rejoicing in Jesus' name? Lord, we make some rejoicing, oh God. We make some rejoicing, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Uh, we receive your authority. We receive your refreshing touch, God. Uh, we receive your strength, uh, your encouragement, the lifting up of the soul, of mind, of body, of emotions in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me feel good in your soul tonight. We feel a release in your spirit. Would you thank God for that release? It's a release in your spirit, a renewing. Something's been released, and God's spirit has replenished what has gone out of you in Jesus' name. Amen. There's some powerful prayers that have been prayed tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Are there any questions about prayer? about to go deeper in prayer, in Jesus' name. If there's any questions at any time, just ask, raise your hand. When you pray in tongues, it's not a wasted prayer. Amen? Sometimes you, you have to fight that, thinking it's you're not doing anything because you're not understanding anything. The emotions might be there, the anointing you might feel. It's worse when you don't feel anything. How many have been there? You're, you're talking in tongues. and But, but even that, because you have scripture, right, that you just read a little while ago, that when you pray in the Spirit, it is the most perfect prayer because you don't know what to pray for, as we should. We, we don't know what to pray for, Right? We don't really know what to pray for. In Romans 8, the last verse right there, he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. We don't know the mind of the Spirit, at least not fully. But the Spirit in us knows his own mind, and he searches our hearts. And then he makes intercession for us and others 
according to the perfect will of God. So when you pray in the Spirit, it's the most perfect prayer you could ever pray. Now, as we grow in prayer, don't pray in English if if it doesn't come from God. Does that make sense? Don't pray in Tagalog if it doesn't come from God in Spanish or in Ch- Mandarin Chinese. And I, I studied a little Fukien Chinese, which nobody speaks. I found out. So thank you very much. That school I went to is useless. Amen. I could count one to ten, but that's it. So, and you know this because when you begin to speak in 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 your native tongue, there, there's there's a break in the spirit if it doesn't flow in the Holy. Does that make sense? There's a break in the spirit, and you 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 pray what's in your mind, and so when that happens, you you go back in tongues. Paul said, "I pray with understanding, and I pray with the spirit also." He's implying that when you pray in the spirit, you don't understand what you're saying. Now, praying with understanding, meaning. In, in my own native tongue. This is Ecclesiastes 5, uh, verse 1. God just gave this to me while we were praying. He says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Your words, my words. Remember the, uh, was it John the Revelator? Or is it Ezekiel? Or maybe it's Isaiah. I'm pretty sure it's one of the prophets. I'm pretty sure it's somebody in the Bible. That when they came to the presence of the Lord, the first thing that they that that came into their spirit says, "Woe is me, a man of unclean lips." Remember that. Where's that at? Isaiah. All right. Amen. At least one of my guesses were correct. The first thing doesn't that isn't that curious when when it came into the presence of God. In a vision, translated into heaven, the first thing that ever came into his spirit says, Woe is me, a man of unclean lips. And the Bible says, The angel of the Lord went to the altar, took tongs. So, and this is just me. He didn't want to touch it with his hand. He's not allowed to touch it with his hand. But it's allowed to touch the flesh because he put it in the mouth of Isaiah. It sanctified his mouth, his tongue, his words. This is very interesting to me that it's almost like it represents sanctification in the blood. And if you could put that back, Sister Terry. Uh, I think when you leaned in to the keyboard, it just advanced it. But it's 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 as if God is saying it's it's the blood. It represents the blood, right? It's almost uh, what what the Lord what what, what l- let me do it, sis. Uh, thank you. It's as if how many of you remember? I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. I mean, remember the the testimony of Brother Jeff Mallory. Brother Jeff Mallory was uh, diagnosed with uh, mantle cell lymphoma, and, and so they they shot him with. He had like a backpack of chemotherapy that is injected into his vein, and he said it's amazing that he said sometimes it, it would leak through the IV, and it would. And he had some solution to to apply because he would burn his skin, but because it was so powerful and potent. And he said, "But if it's injected through the bloodstream, 
the blood can handle it. The flesh can't handle it, but the blood can. I think that represents the power of the blood that covers us when we pray, when that tongue from that coal touches the flesh because that's what God allows and that's what God ordains because you're actually going to judge angels one of these days. And so when it comes to the presence of God, we don't want to speak English when we don't have anything to say. Amen? And, and, and when, when you pray, don't be intimidated by those that, oh, I, I'm not going to pray publicly because, you know, I, I really don't know how to pray. What you're really saying is, I don't sound good to men's ears when I pray. Make sense? Because we, we've all heard somebody that, that they sound good when they pray, right? In English, right? Because usually when you speak in tongues, praying, it, it scares a lot of people, right? You know, some, some are very eloquent when they pray. You know, it's not like some people say they pray in King James Version. Oh, Heavenly Father, Thou art my Father. Early will I seek. My soul longs, at least it's scripture in the Psalms, if you want to pray in English. But Jesus made an example of a man in the temple. He said there was a publican and, and there, was, there was a sinner. And then there was a Pharisee that lifted up his hand and, and prayed and, and, and basically just, just out of his own righteousness. And he, he said the publican won't even so much as lift his head up to heaven and, and prayed a pair of repentance and that humility touches the throne and the mind of God more than the eloquence of speech. So that's what the Lord said through the preacher. When you pray, let your words, your words be few. Amen. Why don't we pray in tongues for just a little bit right now? In the name of Jesus Christ. Ikatolomo satanama. The more you pray in tongues, the more eloquent and fluent you are in tongues. It's, it's, it's a language. You don't have to prime yourself to talk in tongues. You just talk in tongues because it's a language. Come on, just talk in tongues. You don't have to ease into it. You just speak it because that's your father's language, much less just like when you know Spanish or Tagalog. You don't have to think that through. You just switch from English to Spanish or Tagalog or Chinese. Why? Because you know it. When you have the spirit, you speak it. You're fluent in it. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you talk in tongues, uh, you are tasting a little bit of your inheritance. You're tasting a little bit of what you are receiving in full when you get to His kingdom in that dimension when you have a glorified body and you, there's no sin and there's no resistance, there's no flesh to pray through and break through. And you, you get a little taste of heaven when you pray in tongues. The Bible says the Spirit of God is the earnest of your inheritance. It's the down payment of your inheritance. And so I want to encourage you all throughout your day, enjoy your inheritance. Enjoy your inheritance. You know... I asked Brother Allen a little while ago to pray for me. And thank you, Brother Al. I felt the release. You know, to be honest, this past few weeks, maybe a week now, it's been tough to pray. Man, it, it's been rough. And we all go through that. And if you haven't experienced that yet, God bless you. Amen. But like Sister Grace testified, you get your healing, and God allows these little symptoms and even the adversary's voice because it's the sword of the Spirit. You got to keep using that sword. You keep cutting and slaying it, swinging it. It's not a gun, it's not a bazooka of the Spirit. It's not an Abram's tank, one explosion. It's not a nuclear explosion either. It's a sword. You keep cutting, keep cutting. And you retain your miracle. But this past few weeks, it's been, it's been rough, man. It is, you know, the the Buena Park service. My God, that was that was amazing to me. 
it's as if the Lord just put me there to just refresh me. He just waves and waves and waves of the Holy Ghost. And the angels that showed up, it was just, it was just amazing. The angels that held my hand and the angels that, when Brother Daniel prayed, I, I thought he said 40 strong or whatever he said, the number 40. When he said that, I, I felt like just a bunch of them showed up around us. And it's like, like whoom, hey, they're right there. Like the whole place filled the room. You could sense their presence. They made their presence known. It, it was amazing. It was amazing. And those of you that were there, you, you felt that. But this past few weeks, I've been praying for backsliders. And, and God just laid that in my heart. It's been so heavy. Maybe that's why it's been rough for me. Uh, but when I prayed, I prayed one for in particular. And she had a heart attack. And she had a triple heart bypass. I know their family. Her husband was the best friend of our wedding. And they're all backslidden. They've known the Lord for many, many decades. They picked me up in L.A. when I didn't have a car to bring me to church. That, that man picked me up from Orange County to L.A. County for six months. And he, and he would drive me back. And he would feed me. And... and we were good, very, very good friends, and I and I and I didn't intend for that to happen. That that's what God did. But then another backslider that I haven't heard for at least what five years, maybe at least before COVID, he sent fourteen hundred bucks. I'm like, okay, well, one gets a heart attack, the other one rebukes the devourer or sends an offering, because that's what happens when you give. You know that in Malachi it said that I will. When you bring your tithe and your offering, Jesus said, God said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Have you had that revelation? The old prophet Eli Hernandez, he said when he gets attacked with the devil, he said, you know what? I threaten him with my wallet because God's going to rebuke the devourer. Come on, somebody. In Jesus' name. Praise God. And, and so... We all go through this process of ebb and flow. And I believe sometimes God allows that so we would pursue Him. When it's not easy to pray, what are you going to do? You pray. When you don't feel anything when you pray, what do you do? You keep praying. Because it will break through. Amen? There's an ebb and there's a flow. Sun rises, the sun sets, it rains, and then the sun shines again. There's an ebb and flow, and God allows that. So, because you'll never really know and value what you have until you really lose it. Of course, you don't want to lose the Holy Ghost, but when it recedes a little bit, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you repent, right? That's the first thing we do. You're kind of like, well, what did I do? Well, what did they do? And if I didn't do anything, what they're doing? And that's even harder. It's easy to fix yourself. You can't fix somebody else. Amen. And so, maybe I'm sharing that with you. So, you, when you pray, uh, I pray for you. Amen. I hope you pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. At least I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, I need, I need prayer. I do. Amen. Amen. Last scripture, I think God gave me this in Ezekiel 22, 29. And let's stand, Ezekiel twenty two twenty nine. 29, if you want to read this later on. Because all of our prayers, I believe, convenes in this purpose. Because the purpose of God is to seek and to save that which was lost, right? That's the highest purpose. That's the reason why you came. That's the reason why you're, you're alive. That's the reason why you're still here after you've been saved, obeying Acts 2, 38 message is to seek and save that which was lost in Ezekiel 22, 29. Actually, I'll, you, could, you could take this PowerPoint off and project our, our software there. Uh, Ezekiel 22, 29. And I want you to read this. And we'll end with this. Because you're unique. Uh, Brother Dylan talked about the, your value. Um. Man cannot create something unique. 
right? The, 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 val the highest value of, of paintings and sculptures are very valuable, most of all, because who made it? And then there's just one of them left, at least. The, the cars that, you know, people collect, like they find in a barn someone, they restore it. And there was maybe a hundred made back then, and that's just one. But, but even that, man mass produces things, right? 20 to 29. Man mass produces things. Your iPhone, it's not unique, right? I may probably have one just like it. Your shoes, your car, even your Tesla, right, Sister Grace? All mass produced, right? That's a little standing joke with us. Amen. Hey, you know what? God might just bless you with a Tesla. Come on. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I know a prophet God has given like four trucks. He'll give one away. God will give, send somebody, give him another one. Give it away. And God, hey man, you want to stretch your faith? Praise God. Sister Lanny, I feel God wants to touch you right now in the name of Jesus. Jeff, would you lay hands on your wife? Would you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? Would you speak uh, in English or Chinese that God has put in your spirit? Uh, it doesn't come from your mind. Uh, it's a word that you will speak to her, and the power of God uh, will flow through you, your voice, your word, your hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. he'll do a quick work. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. How do you feel, Sister Lenny? How you feel in your body? Ask her, Brother Jeff, in English. Feel good? Yeah? Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for her. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's nice just to flow on the Holy Ghost and just take you anywhere. I read a quote the other day, you know, uh, he said, tell the truth, it'll be an adventure in itself. He said, whatever the outcome would be, you'll know it comes from the truth. I go, wow. You want an adventure? Tell the truth. Well, I don't want to be, you know, it's a white light. <laughs> It ain't no white lie. It's a lie. Well, I don't want to be offensive. Tell the truth. Do I look ugly? Yeah. You look hideous. It's an adventure. Do I look fat? Absolutely. Amen. Maybe not in your marriage, but, you know, I don't know. But tell the truth. Amen. I just thought I'd share that with you. I'm sorry, Al. It's actually Ezekiel 22, verse 30. We'll, we'll get there at some point. If you want to do the Amplified Classic beside it, that will be good as well. We actually found that by by accident. Me and Brother Jim, I'm like, what, what, what is it we're trying to do? And like, what? Oh, we're trying to undo it, actually. And then, and, But this is Ezekiel 22, verse 30. And I believe this is what God wants to conclude with tonight. He said, and I sought for a man. Now, remember, the Bible, the Bible is not sexist. Amen. The Bible doesn't treat women as second class, right? Because, it, it, in fact, it's, it's highly, the premise in the beginning in the book of Genesis says, male and female, he created them. 
in his own image. In fact, he says, he male and female, he, called, he, he created them and he called their name Adam, both of them. Read it, it's there. The, both of them, their names were Adam. I know Adam named her Eve, but God named both of them Adam. They were the beginning. And, 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 and God holds women. And so when it says actually a man, it's, it's everybody. Amen? Because we're all sons of God. Right? So when it says sons of God, Right? The Bible says when you're born again of the water and spirit, you become sons of God. Right? Well, I guess the women are not sons of God. If you follow the premise of the political system, which is kind of just crazy. But inside of us, there's a quality of a son. You know what a son is? The male side? It's, it's, it's aggressive. It's bold. And all of us have that character traits. Right? Some more than others. And that's okay. We're all sons of God. Then to mess with your mind even more, you're, we're all the body, the bride of Christ. So if the women are felt made to feel, you know, they're excluded when they're called sons of God. Now, we're, now the men are, if you want to feel excluded, you're the bride of Christ. You're female. I'll let you figure it out on your own. Amen. But here we go. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. And I sought for a man among them who should build up the wall. In the King James, it says, and stand in the gap. If you, I'm sorry, how could you do the King James? So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall. Actually, I need to change mine. So I'll just read yours. Is that, is that King James? I think that's the new King James. Although we like new. And I sought a man among them who should be, make up the hedge, I think, is what King James said. He would make up the hedge. And he would stand in the gap before me. For the land, and this is the purpose, that I should not destroy it. But in Ezekiel's time, he found none. Remember Abraham's negotiation about Lot? Lord, if there's 50, would you spare the city? There's 30. There's 20. And he stopped at 10 because they had big families. And he's thinking in his mind, he, his family saved because he'll... He'll order his family to obey the ways of the Lord, not knowing that he did not. But this is always God's plan right here, right now, in every dispensation. He's looking for somebody that would stand in the gap. You're that person for your family, for your friends, for your neighborhood, for your school. You stand in the gap. Notice you're not doing anything per se, like my wife likes to say that. Everything's per se. What, what, what is per se anyway? Like because of? Or what is it? Not per se, like in Spanish. Si, no, ese. But, but anyway, you, you stand, having done all to stand, stand therefore. You stand. You stand. Can you see yourself standing right now? Can you close your eyes? You're, you're powerful in the Lord. You're mighty in God. To the pulling down of strongholds, you could cast down every high thing that exalts itself against your family, against you, a lie. You could come against it in the name of Jesus. Some of you are standing in that gap right now. Come on, why don't you practice this in the Holy Ghost? Why don't you practice it here in this house? Uh, so when you do go home, uh, you, you begin to feel uh, and you begin to recognize, uh, I'm standing right now for somebody. I'm, I'm praying for the soul right now. I'm, I'm, I'm equipped with the armor of God right now. I'm fighting.
waiting. I'm travailing for them in birth again until Christ be formed in them. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, when you put a mind, when you put a name, Lord, when you put a friend's name, a family member in my spirit, it's a cue for me to stand in the gap. I may not know what's happening in their life, but you do, oh God. You love them. You love them in Jesus' name. He's searching for somebody, seeking for a man, a woman, oh, to make up the hedge, oh, to build up a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of someone, on behalf of the land, on behalf of souls that I should not destroy it. And God's finding a lot of those this evening in the lighthouse. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. How many are thankful for the strength that you feel because of the flow of the Holy Ghost? That refreshing, that, that, that you can't get in anywhere, but by that means. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. I think that's it. Iron Men Conference. For those of you who have not registered yet, I have not. Uh, you can go to the website, the church website, stlh.org. And you got to register online. It's cheaper. And then on Friday night, and you could pay on Eventbrite. So if you see it right there, SoCalIronMen2023.Eventbrite.com. Right here. See that? You can download this flyer from the website as well, church website. I think it's, uh, how much is it? I think it says it there. Man, 30 bucks? I thought it was 20 before. Tw 15 somewhere? All right, right here. On, oh, that's a lab session. So it's 30 registration. And then if you want to eat dinner, and I want to encourage you, and we'll carpool, you know, we'll, we'll, let's carpool, brother, brother Johnny, brother Jeff, we'll carpool, brother, brother John, Johnny and John, and then and all the other men. The, if, if they, they are having a barbecue dinner after service Friday night, and you, when you register, you could pay $20 more, and, and they, they, they serve good food. And, and it's great just to have men, you know. The, the the service dynamics is different when it's just men. All the all all the singers are men, so you don't have an alto soprano. They're like, oh, well, well, you know, it's like it's just you know, and it's just when the, when the men run services, it's just straight to the point. It's like going to the mall. You hunt. You don't go to different mall, different stores. It's a straight line. The shoe store. You you hunt it. You grab it, you pack it, you leave. That's that's how the services of the men is just let's get this done and and we have a good time and we eat and we go home, amen. So praise God, <laughs> amen. Keep keep everyone in prayer and remember those those door hangers as God leads you in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday, if not sooner, in Jesus' name.